Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're gonna to be talking about these things, rats, and what size rat to feed what size ball python. In front of us here are all the sizes we use um, as far as rats go. We don't use mice anymore. So I'm gonna try and show you what sizes we use for what sized animal um, when we upgrade, etc. Let's take a quick look. Right, so first of all, obviously, when they hatch, what size meal they give them. I've seen many people do many different things. We ourselves have done many different things. I'm gonna start the video before I start showing snakes and sizes. Two things we're gonna mention. One is everyone does it differently. Especially when it comes to feeding, you can ask a hundred different people and get a hundred different answers on how they feed their snakes. Um, so that is clear. This is just what we do, not what to do. If you wanna follow, by all means, we've had good success with it. Um, you know, by no means is this textbook, this is just our experience of what we do. Second of all, I'm dealing with rodents here, one of which, one of which is a fresh cold rat, this little one here, and um, I'm going to try to record this video showing you snakes, showing you meals, and try not to get bitten, because my snakes are very hungry all the damn time, and hopefully I won't get tagged. So, we're going to start with hatchlings, okay? when they're fresh out of the egg. Now we used to, and every now and again, I'll talk about what we used to do, so you have an idea of what we do now. We used to feed them small mice as their first meal. I no longer feed mice full stop. Uh, we actually stopped breeding mice altogether, and as you will see, have seen on the channel, we do breed our own rodents now. Um, all of these, apart from this one, are produced by us and frozen accordingly. So we don't start with, we don't use mice at all. I will mention Maltese later, but I'm gonna specifically focus on rats for this video. So let's say this little guy. And I featured him in the previous video. Um, so he's fresh, fresh out of the egg, okay? Just shed out. Actually hasn't had his first meal yet. Now his first meal for me, and I know some people start smaller, I don't like to. I like to start with rat pups, okay? And this one's a bit squished, so it looks very wide. So a rat pup will be the first meal I will offer this animal. And I'll tell you, 99.9% .9 of my animals take that first time. If the animal is particularly small, and we've had one this year, so, but if they're particularly small, instead of me offering a rat chub of this size, I will get a slightly smaller rat chub. You can see there, the head size is different. This one's slightly smaller than that one, but that's the smallest I'll go. And I have had no animal this year, since we've been doing rats, refuse the first meal. When I say that, I'm not saying the first attempt at feeding, some do, some need some time, but they have all as their first meal, for the most part, apart from one, maybe two, taken a rat pup. The only reason they haven't is that, like the little um, uh, pastel cow girl we hatched, who was only 25 grams, inconceivable. But she's actually feeding on these now, after two or three meals. That's what we start them on with and we feed them approximately for the first couple of weeks every five days okay sometimes every six every seven ballpark every five days they get a rat as a meal um, and they continue to feed on those rats for the first couple of weeks once they've had a good amount of meals and i'll show you a variety of different size animals so these will probably definitely try to bite me i'm going to move these jugs from here for a second so we can see the different sizes that i'm going to show get her out as well why not don't go so these guys once so here's here's a good example so this girl right here okay this girl's a little bit a little bit bigger right this girl here has had four meals of this size now you would say based on the size of this animal okay that could still be an appropriate size meal okay and it wouldn't be harmful to do so. Me, I prefer pushing them up. So she will actually get 
a small wiener instead, okay? She's probably a month and a half old now, but she, she's already feeding on small wieners. She's had one small wiener so far, which was the last meal I offered her. Um, and to be honest, I'm messing around with her. She has just shared, but I will see if, if, if Mademoiselle wants a meal. Do you want a meal? Do you want a small wiener? Just to make a point. Okay, there you go. So she will now eat that small wiener. This girl as well, small wieners. She's been tackling down small wieners like nobody's business. And it leaves a lump in them, but not a grotesque lump. I think this is important. So it leaves a very visible lump. And that's what I like to see with the smaller ones. When I open the drawer and they've been fed, I want to immediately see that animal's eaten. I don't want to have to sort of kind of go, yeah, there's a bit of a lump there. I want to see a nice visible lump in these younger animals. You normally see it in the belly more than anything else. But I like to see a nice visible lump, but nothing grotesque. I don't want to see them look like they're just eating the balloon for the most part, okay? I don't want to see this huge thing. I don't want them to struggle with their meal either. So because we breed rats also, we have the luxury of selecting appropriate sizes. So obviously small wieners, um, you know, by industry standard, is a bracket between two set weights, okay? I think most companies do, I think between 30 grams and 50 grams, if I'm not mistaken, is round about, or 50 or 60 grams, round about the bracket for a small wiener. What we have the luxury of doing, thankfully, because of breeding, is we can choose a smaller small wiener or a larger large small wiener, if that makes sense. So we can prick one that's closer to 30 grams, or one that's closer to 60 grams, depending on the animal. So she would be on the, on the smaller end of small wieners, whereas she would be approaching the larger end of small wieners. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I haven't lost anyone. So she's, do you, do you want to just catch? It's a bit of a horrific shot, eye on eye. Yum, yum. So, I'll put her back. And what we'll do is, hopefully by the, before I come to edit, she will have eaten that meal, obviously. I will show you what she looks like after, here from the future. Um, she's eating that small wiener now, and you can see a noticeable lump in her, right? You get a side view. Noticeable lump, but nothing grotesque. And this is a, I think a, a, a four or five week old hatchling taking small wieners. So I want you to see that this animal is by no means, right? By no means bloated, by no means out of proportioned meal. It's a good sized meal. Just wanted to show you that. Now she's eating it, she claimed. We've lost the small wiener now, okay? Because <laughs> I've just fed it off. Um, so now they're on small wieners. And I'm not going to tell you weight brackets. Why? I don't know. I don't know how big an animal needs to be by weight uh, because I've just not done it. I've never done it that way. I've never weighed an animal going, oh, you're X weight, time to move you up. I just use my eyes. And when a prey item begins to show less and less of a bulge in them, that's when I know up the meal size. For example, this female now, right, is approaching the, so this is a more, more typical, just show this off, Jay. More typical, I would say larger end of, of a large wiener, okay? She hasn't quite got to them yet, but she is, and you can see, right, she's on large wieners now, okay? And this animal here would leave a nice bulge. I'm gonna just tap her, because I am trying not to get bitten here. It would leave a nice bulge in her whilst not being a grotesque bulge, L nice size. I will mention also this female here is, what is she now, Jay? Four months, I think we, she's four months old and she's th 350 grams and trying to kill the camera. That's the second video we've recorded and the second video she's tried to kill the camera. Um, it doesn't help this time, we've got rodents though. Tenacious feeder, her entire clutch is grown at this and I'll give you, I'll pause here with sizes and I'll say why we don't use mice anymore. We found this year, starting them on rat pups and increasing as we have has given them a nice but fast growth rate it's steady you can see these animals aren't fat they haven't got folds in them and wrinkles they still have the nice body form that a royal python should have but they are putting on good size at a very good rate okay they're growing exponentially well to the point of this girl right here at four months old is only 100 grams shy 
of some of her stepsister, some of the other females we hatched last year. And the main reason for that is they got started on mice for a longer period and she was started on rats. And she's only 100 grams shy of some of the animals that are only that are practically a year older than her. So we will not be doing mice anymore for any reason. Um, and this is where I mentioned Maltese. If I have a problem feeder of which in the entire collection I have two, then I will provide them with Maltese, okay? And Maltese is for me, if it's my animal that I'm keeping, even if I'm selling it, I'll be completely clear that it's on Maltese, but it's for an animal that will just not take rats. And, and that, and I will make a disclaimer, that is when we've tried everything. Frozen rats, pre-killed rats, freshly killed rats, brained rats, live rats, and they do not take anything, then Maltese. And once they're on Maltese, I don't bother worrying about taking them back to, to, to rats again. I'm not gonna talk about sizes of Maltese, and the reason why is I haven't got that much experience working with Maltese, okay? Where I've only had a few animals on Maltese, and they've only been on Maltese now for maybe a month or two, I don't feel confident in telling you this size, this size, and this size. What I will say is they don't need to be as big as the rats because they have a higher nutritional value, so you don't need as large a size. Um, but yeah, back to rats. She's on a medium-sized large wiener at the moment, probably this sort of size large wiener. Then, once they then progress, so she wouldn't be, able, if she took a small rat now, which I'm pretty sure if I gave her, she would definitely try, I wouldn't because it would leave a grotesque bulge in her. And I don't like seeing those grotesque bulges. I think that's more than they require. Um, and I will also say that animals like this, once they get past pup stage to small wiener stage, they're on a small wiener every seven days. They don't get it more often than that. The only time they may get it every five days is when they're on rat pups. And that's the only time I, dub I feed more frequently. Small rats. Essentially, if we come over here, um, let me think of a good example. Clown. The clown girl is a good, yeah, she's not really eating, so I'm less likely to bite. She's less likely to bite. Me. Okay, clown girl. Yeah, she's a nice size. And I'm actually going to find out, for those people who are interested in weights, let's find out what she's weighing at currently. So, she's currently weighing about 600 grams. To be honest, she's a bit big, so I'm going to go down. Because for me, I would say if I had to guess off the top of my head, I would say about four or five hundred grams. Yeah. She would still be on the larger end of large wieners, to be fair. Um, and by the way, most of these animals here. What about her? Champagne and G. Yeah, there you go. She's a bit smaller, I think. No, I think she's about the same size. Yeah, she's about the same size. So, see, this is when you do your homework. Uh, she's a bit small. She's a decent size. Okay, let's find out what she's doing. 530, so she's a good size. See, now this animal is actually coming up to a year old and she's only 530 odd grams. So she's only 200 grams heavier than that four month old female. The only difference that I've done, not in terms of frequency of meals or anything like that, this one was started on mice and was on mice for a significant amount of time. I didn't make the transition early enough and then I ended up with an animal that was a bit eh about taking rats. And as a result, she has had an overall much, much slower growth rate. But she is now, and I know these are all on small rats, she's on a small rat. And you can see actually, to be fair, that, is this the small rat? It is the small rat. No, no it's not. That's the small, I was thinking that was a bit small. There's a the small rat. It would leave a nice sized bulge in there. No darling, don't smell it, it's frozen. You can't eat it. A nice sized, Uh, I think we might need to cut. You're probably gonna have to cut here. And just before we cut, uh, this is how good of a feeding response these animals have. This is a frozen rat and she's trying to eat it. Be back with you in a second once I detach her. Right, we're back with you. Um, it took a bit more than I thought to let, make her let go of this frozen rodent. And listen, it's frozen. Um, but she's a great feeder now. She's feeding on small rats, okay? And 
as I was trying, I'm going to make sure our head's away from me this time. You can see it would leave a decent sized bulge without leaving a grotesque bulge in here. However, in the past, and I'm going to put this lovely lady back because she's obviously wants more food and she was fed about three or four days ago and she's hungry again. Um, and this is just our animals tend to be a bit more like hungry. I mean, I have a few that are, I mean, she's torn its ear, poor thing. Anyway, let's put this down. Graphic content. Anyways. Um, Once they get to small rats, which is about that sort of size, for both males and females, they never upgrade again, okay? They stay on small rats. They may upgrade within that bracket. So they may go from, so uh, some suppliers suggest that a 100 gram rat is the starting bracket for a um, small rat, okay? So they start from 100 grams, and I believe they go up to something like 120, 30, something like that, maybe 140. Don't quote me on this. You can look at it. What we would do, because we breed our own rodents or because we place orders with people like rattlesnakes and boss rats um i would actually ask for a particular size okay i would request if they could be all a bit of on the bigger side of that bracket and the reason for that is we used to feed them medium rats carrying on with the same technique medium rats then large rats and one of our girls was an extra large rat we don't do that anymore and what we find is when they're young, they really require that nutrition, okay? And they use the majority of that nutrition. They don't produce giant poos. They seem to be using a lot more of that prey item. When they get older, and we found a lot of the females that were feeding on medium rats, because in captivity we're feeding them every single week, they don't need giant meals. They really don't, okay? And again, like I'm saying, there are probably a hundred different ways through a hundred different people that you could do this. I know some breeders will feed larger meals or more frequently. I know uh, breeders who, for as far as adults go, they may uh, feed them weekly, let's say in the off season when they're not breeding and double their prey intake in the, uh, in the on season. So when they are breeding, pound them with more food. As far as we're doing it now, oh, oh, to add to that, I know people who barely feed them and they thrive. And we're talking about big breeders, really big breeders who feed them sparsely so they don't even feed them every week they're feeding them small rats or medium rats every other week there's so many calibrations of how to do this but for us we're feeding now a small rat every seven days to every animal that size and beyond all the way up to our large females a small rat every seven days We have been toying with the idea and we will be experimenting this year especially with girls over a certain size we may double their prey intake when they're breeding okay that will be dictated predominantly by our rat production so it'll be one way of us dealing with the overproduction of rats is that we'll buy to use them up in the breeding season girls let's say over 1500 grams or over 2000 grams this we haven't actually thought about this to that detail yet because we're not at that stage yet but we might be giving them a double meal so we might either be giving them uh, the most likely alternative is two small rats in one go rather than every five days because it gets messy like that i can tell you even with a small number of hatchings i have to print off a rotor so that i can remember when their next feed day is but our animals have been doing really well our males for the most part actually never progress past a large wiener we don't ever feed them anything above a large wiener 
Um, the only time we do is let's say a male has had, you know, a, a rough long season, okay? He's had a, a big old season and he's lost a little bit of weight. Then in the interim of me trying to get, or, you know, trying to get them to put their weight back on, I will feed them a larger meal, that's a small rat, okay? And they will be fed that larger um, or that small rat every seven days until they've regained that original weight that they were and then they'll go back down to small, you know, uh, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. They'll go back down to uh, a large wiener rat, which is their staple, and that maintains their body weight. And that's what we're looking for here. With females, we're looking to provide them with enough nutrition to lay a healthy clutch and have enough reserves to lay that clutch. And ideally, we want that in the off season when they're off, they're putting on some weight. For me, once a girl gets beyond sort of 16, 17, 1800 grams, I'm not looking for that female to be putting on another 500 grams every season. As long as she's putting on 50, 100, 150 grams, you know, compared to her previous weight, I'm more than happy. Because if you think about it, they're putting on that large amount of weight every season, which is achievable in the beginning. Before you know it, you're going to have a 10 kilo <laughs> ending your roll python. It's just not conceivable. So a, a minimum return to the weight they were before, prior to breeding, potentially to put on a, a, a few extra grams. That's always good. I want to know that they're improving. They're slightly bigger than they were the year before, but not by miles. Hope that has helped. Okay. And obviously I've talked about rats. We've had, I haven't been bitten, thankfully, but this thing did, it got its ear torn off. Uh, <laughs> and now what I'm actually gonna do after this video is because I teased her and she's been a good sport, I'm gonna defrost this. Um, it's defrosting in my hands as we speak. I'm gonna defrost this rodent and actually offer it to her so she can have it as, as, as a little reward for being a good sport. So guys, until the next video, if you have any questions, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Sorry about that. Um, don't forget to hit, uh, leave a comment. I do apologize. Leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, hit the like and subscribe button. Your support means the absolute world to us. And until the next video, we'll see you then. Bye.